Blog Talk Radio. Good old uh, gallon of tea, sweet tea right now. 
girl, I was thinking about some tea early. I was like, oh, I went to that old grocery store, girl. <laughs> and that old grocery store? That old grocery store. You know, it was, uh, you know, because, you know, my car is kind of, you know, on vacation right now. Yeah, you, you, drive, you drive it sometimes, as you said last week. Yeah, I drive it sometimes. And, mm-hmm. uh. And girl, I had to get in that Uber, girl. Mm-hmm. But uh, I got a special Uber story for everybody tonight, you know. Uh-oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh. Listen, so I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How was work today? How was work today before I get in the Uber store? Uh, work was good, but I'm sure it's not half as interesting as this Uber store you're about to tell. Girl, this Uber, listen, listen, I was in this Uber, right? I was coming home from the workplace, and uh, Lord have, Lord have mercy. So, hello? Zam, can you hear me? Okay, now I can hear you. Okay. All right, I'm we'll tell this. Uh, yeah, I, I accidentally muted myself. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna tell this. I'm gonna tell this Uber story, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some disclosures first. I mean, some uh, affidavits first. Mm-hmm. First, I'm gonna say this: I am not by any means racist. Second, I'm gonna say this. I had I used to be an Uber driver, so I'm I'm sharing about Uber, not saying that I don't like Uber. Mm-hmm, I just mm-hmm. got some issues with a with some drivers. So anyway, mm-hmm. I rode with Asians, Hispanic, Black, you know all of all of, I mean, all of it. You know, one dude told me he was from from Australia or somewhere. You know. I rode with mm-hmm. lots of different people, right? Mm-hmm. My experience with Caucasian people is I get in, they pull up into the parking lot, not on the side of the street. They actually pull up to a safe place, and they mm-hmm. and they look, they unlock the door, and I get in, and they say, good morning, or Good afternoon. How are you doing? I mean, full conversation. You know, mm-hmm. they tell me about you know how how the day went, and they ask me about mine, and they say, you know, um, I hope you have a good day at work, or I hope you enjoy yourself. You know, got in mm-hmm. the car with a with an Asian guy, never with an Asian woman, an Asian guy. He mm-hmm. says to me. He says, how are you doing? I said, oh, I'm doing fine. So oh, that's good. That's good. I said, how long have you been driving today? Oh, I've been driving since 4 o'clock this morning. It was it was 4 o'clock in the evening. I've been riding, you know. So I said, uh, I said, okay, cool. That's cool. So he started talking about his children. He started talking about his son. He started talking about, you know, and then he said, ask me how I had kids and, and all of this. And then he said, yeah, you know, the polite stuff. A Asian guy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then I, I was in the car with a Hispanic lady. Yeah. This Hispanic lady, I got in the car or whatever, and she said, so, where are you headed? You headed to work? I said, oh, yeah, I'm headed to work. And and, and I told her, I said, how long have you been driving Uber? She says, uh, she's been driving it for some, for some years, you know, uh, way back before COVID. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And she said, she said to me, she said, you know, I – do Uber on the side, but I I I, I do a crafting business, and then I do you know she's telling me everything that she do, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I I even I mean black woman got in the got now now it varies. I got in with one black lady and she didn't speak at all. Damn. She looked back at me to make sure it was it was me. And 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 okay. She did say, she did say, um, are you okay? You know, is it too hot? She did that. And mm-hmm. she drove off. She she drove recklessly. I, I mean, hey, 
But I ain't mad at Uber drivers. You've been driving all day. You're driving a little reckless. As long as you ain't driving towards a wreck, you know, or collision, <laughs> I don't even mess with you because I know that some people can't drive, you know. I know it. Yeah. So she didn't say much and nothing, you know. I think I caught that Uber over to my mama house. Then mm, got in with a, with a uh, uh, another black lady, right? Black. She mm-hmm. she talked to me. Her her daughter's name was Janice, and 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 you know, you know. Mm-hmm. So I got in with an African man. Okay, the African man told me about told me about his wife. Told me I was very attractive, and told me he always tell a lady first that he's married before they get involved, so that that they'll know that he's married and not to. Uh, mess with his marriage. Wait a minute. Again. So involved before they get involved in the Uber ride. <sighs> My God, Lord have mercy. Before they get involved with him. <laughs> okay, but that has nothing to do with the price of tea in China. With me getting in your Lord, ride, you automatically think that because I'm getting in your ride, that I'm automatically gonna want to begin a relationship. Therefore, you have to tell me you're married. Oh, he went on from there. Before I could even ask, what was this about? Before I could even say <laughs> anything, he went on to talk about that he takes he'll take the lady on trips and he'll he'll and and we have not done a segment of bozoism, but this is the bozo moment. He gets to telling me, you know, hey, you know, as long as you don't you don't you know threaten to call my wife and you, I can I can take care of. <laughs> You and everything. Oh my and I god! Said, that's the only thing I said after all that, because I was curious. By the time he finished this whole spill, you know, I was like, mm-hmm. "So, uh, but I said, but I thought you could have close to fifteen wives. I, I watched the movies. Y'all can have a couple <laughs> wives. You can, I, I say, I watched movies. I know, I've seen in the movies." Where you, he say, he say, uh, well, over in America, we can't blah, 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 blah. So I was like, okay, that's understood. And so he pulls up at my place, because I ain't that far from the job, and he says, he says, well, can I have your number? I said, no, thank you. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't, I don't mess with married men. So he says, he says to me, but my wife won't know. I, I'm pretty but sure I will knows. know. Yeah. I'm pretty sure she knows, though. I, mean, I imagine. I haven't even told you my name. You only know it out of the app, right? Uh-huh. I haven't even introduced myself. All I did was get in. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So if I just got in, then I know that it's a lot of other folks that done got in here. And you probably didn't. You probably got a whole black Same book feel. just off of your... You know what I'm saying? Your wife knows. So he he your only he only drives women. Uber to find to find women. That's what that is. Got to be, got to be, got to be. All right, so we go to the second. We go to the the other black man, because it's another. It's a white man too. That listen. So I get in this car, right? It's a little bit. It's a little little coupe, right? Mm-hmm. A uh, pretty red coupe. It pulls up real smooth, right? Door open. <laughs> Everything. I, I so I ain't tripping because I'm used to the Uber riding situation now, right? Uh, not that I want to be, but it had to happen. That's just what it so, is right now at this at this time. Yeah, at this at this moment. So I get mm-hmm. in, put my bag in there, and everything, and uh, dude, don't say a word. Hot car, hot. The car is hot. I'm to my <laughs> listen. <laughs> The car is wow. blazing hot on the inside. By the time I sit down before I can close the door, I say, it's hot. It's too hot. I saw it. Mm-hmm. Now I'm recording because I'm going to let y'all know I am a little slow and fast all mm-hmm. at the same mm-hmm. time. So I'm on that button that lets the window down. I'm just tapping, trying to get the window. I say, young man, young man, because I understand people say yes, ma'am, to me now. So I figure that um, <laughs> I'm a little old, right? So. I use my ma'am card. Look, young man, young man, uh, can we let this window down? I can't breathe. He said, all you had to do was ask me to cut the air on. Now, 
All I'm going to say is, if that you was all I had Houston, to do. It's 100 degrees outside. Why would you not? That's my point. This should have already been done or a glimpse or a breeze of air, like a hint that somebody needed it. Should have been happening in this car. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I told him, I said, okay, well, could you turn the air on, right? I'm quick with it sometimes. Okay, can you cut the air on? So he cut the air on. Now, mind you, he's not listening to the radio because usually an Uber driver say you want to listen to something or they have it on some elevator music or some station. He had Martin playing, okay? <laughs> Martin is playing. And Martin ain't okay. playing out of the theory, the radio. It's playing on his phone that's right there uh, in the uh, cup holder. So he's watching Martin? He's watching Martin while he's driving. Now, and he ain't just watching. So how many stars did you give him? Uh, <laughs> Crazy. Right. The things Ooh. that people do when they are dealing with the public, that's one thing that you don't do. Oh, uh, okay. So I said, he got, I got home, right? Now, mind you, young man ain't driving the speed limit slow sometimes. He says sometimes because he laughs it. He ain't laughing himself. He don't have Oh, I've been like, excuse me, sir, could you pull over at the next stop? I am yes. I am the uh, Uber police. Hey, Dick, I need to confiscate your call because I know you got to run a place. Listen, so he pulls up at the house. We make it. I'm like, thank you, Lord. I come in the house. I say, Lord, you know, just protect me, you know, my next ride. So later on that evening, the next day, getting off work. Right. I ain't even thought about the Uber driver from the day before. I'm, I hadn't thought about Martin staying the day after. All I'm thinking about is I need to get home. My feet hurt, blah, yada, yada, right? So, because I had this customer that came into the wig shop, and she says to me, oh, do you work here? Oh, we'll talk about that later. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a different kind of person. Let's move on. So, Get this Uber driver, black man, black man, okay? So I get in the car, and the first thing I always say to the Uber driver is, thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm. Stop, got in, damn, I put all my stuff down, all that. Mm-hmm. So we take off, right? You don't mm-hmm. go, like, the back street, Scott to to. Got to Alabama. No, he gets on the freeway. Which first time? Well, now about the second time a driver got on the freeway. So he gets on the freeway. I ain't tripping. I'm just in the zone because he got Google Maps, right? He got Google Maps. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't have to tell him where to go. I just get in there. The app gonna show him, right? Uh huh. Girl, when I looked up. Oh, he had passed all my exes, all of them. We was in, we was coming down, we was over off of I ten. We was off of I ten. Okay. Now those those of you from Houston, you know uh, where. Uh, <laughs> listen, listen, listen. So, kept the young man on the shoulder. I say, sir, where we going? I said, sir, because he was look a little older. Sir, where we going? He was still a young man, you know. So I was like, sir, where are we going? He didn't say a word. I said, sir, he didn't say a word. I kept, you know, I tapped him on the shoulder, sir. Not a word. He kept his eyes forward. By this the time what? I'm texting Moni. By this time I'm texting Moni. Moni, I'm in a, uh, I'm in a, I'm in a black car. <laughs> they ain't got, got a, uh, got to say, you know. Whole description. Mom takes me back, Mama. What's wrong? I said, I'm somewhere in Houston. I don't know where I am. He said, What you mean you're somewhere in Houston? What you? I said, I'm with an Uber. I'm in an Uber. He said, Oh Lord. I and said, and I don't what know where nationality I am. was this man? He was a black man. 
This is a black man. And I want y'all to refer back to my previous statement that I'm not a racist. I am a black woman. I'm not a Karen. I'm a black woman. Okay? Mm-hmm. I'm a black woman and over with a black man. So y'all can throw everything who is out. Completely, can... Who is completely disregarding you and yeah. Yeah, and what I'm saying for him. So I say, so, I, all right, so I'm watching, and I'm saying, okay, well, he passed up that exit. Okay, let me see where I am. Okay, okay, so he should take this next exit. Okay, so I'm sitting there, and I'm texting my mom just in case. You know, I never said I love you, I love you, I want you to understand. Oh. Then I was going to go to the next kid. So, so, mom say. Go in the Uber app and report him. I say, I'm, I say, I am. Just tell me you love me back. I love you. So, but, so I looked up. He was I ten coming down through going through downtown. So obviously, passed up my exit right, and was trying to find his way. Now, why did I share this story with you guys? I shared that story because when y'all get in Uber willy nilly like I did this time, I learned my lesson. When you're getting in Uber, keep your eyes on the road. Keep your eyes on the road. Mm-hmm. People may have, people may have. Now, watch this. Turn around. Hold on, y'all. I'll finish that thought. Turn around and they try to charge me extra. He lost his damn nigga. mind. Girl, girl, I was on the Uber app. Now, I'm sharing information with y'all, which y'all going to find this out later. So I go into the Uber app and say, y'all can't charge me, blah, 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 because your homeboy, the you, you, dude y'all let drive under y'all name got lost. So there's no, so they gave me my money back. But at the same time, Jeez. it took me two hours to get a message through. Why, and then I went online to find the number to Uber to call and talk to somebody there's nobody to talk to. You have to you have to go through the rigmarole of the app to report people. And people be talking about a rating. Rating, rating, I, I need somebody to hear my side of things before I give this Negro no stars. I need to talk to somebody before I give what he what he but he know he's gonna get he know he's gonna get these get this zero he know it he feel it mm. but see the fact that you were trying to get his attention and he was not acknowledging you yeah he they wouldn't have got paid nothing girl then. I, later on, I done prayed and got the anxiety off me. I'm in the bed, and Moan called me. <laughs> no, Moan texted me. Wait, this is crazy. Moan texted me and say, Mama, where you at now? It was damn fucking <laughs> I say, I say, my bad. <laughs> I got home three hours ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. So another point I want to make, it ain't got nothing to do. With the color of a driver's skin, all of them drive bad. Okay, all of them. <laughs> all of them. All of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, from the lady that just did not speak at all to the to the guy who to had super nice on one. The, yeah, to yeah, to the one they want to tell me about his kids and and how he'll be happy when they leave the house. Yeah, and the, and and the and the adulterer, adulterer, yes. Mm, mm, mm. Lord have mercy. So that was my Uber trip. So, mm. yeah, I'll just pray my strength. Mm. I ain't as strong as y'all. I ain't as strong as y'all are. You understand me? Mm. I know some people say give stuff to the Lord and all that. I do give it to God. When I get up in the morning, uh-huh. I gave the whole day to God. And you know what God did? He, he allowed me to run across that person. See, mm-hmm. y'all don't look at stuff right. Y'all look at it like y'all say, you know, take the Lord along with you everywhere you go. But the Lord has already made the way. So if I run into somebody that's ignorant, 
God allowed them to cross my path, and it's, I have a duty and responsibility to say the necessary words that will help them get back on track in their life. That's, that's mm-hmm. what I'm supposed to do, you know. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we don't realize that we want to be nice, but sometimes God puts you there to say what you need to say for real. And Some, don't be sometimes people need the hard truth. Yeah, they need they need a a shake, just shake, you know. They didn't see it coming, you know. Mm-hmm. I feel like that lady at the at the beauty supply. Do you work here? I say, uh, who are you talking to? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, ma'am. I say, yeah. I say, who are you talking to? I say, this is a wig shop. This ain't uh, this ain't the, you know what I'm saying? This ain't supermarket or the uh, you know what I mean? You can't just walk up on anybody and say, you know, and talk to them crazy. Girl, I said, who are you talking to? Real fast. I, and I didn't think, y'all, so I did it. I reacted. Mm-hmm. How about that? I'm just saying. And there it go. Anyway, Sam, you got an Uber before? Um, yes. We were in mm-hmm. Dallas. And um, a group of us went out. I don't like driving in Dallas, and they like to drink. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah, we got an mm-hmm. Uber. Yeah, we mm-hmm. did that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see. When I went to Vegas, no, we didn't get an Uber. We rented a car. No, mm-hmm. I can't. I think that's the only time that I that I did an Uber. Yeah, me and Dallas okay. traffic don't get along ever. The same people, yeah, yeah. the same people that drive that were driving when I figured out that I didn't like it, are the same people that are driving now. And there's some new people too, and can't none of them drive. <laughs> oh, none of them can drive like I wish they would drive. So I just stay out of their territory. Oh, it, Zan, I got one more. Mm-hmm. So I went to the doctor, right? Okay, mm-hmm. and this one just popped up in my head because I, I deem it necessary to share. So I went to the doctor, right, and uh, I'm coming out to the doctor's office. I got my, all my little prescriptions and all that good stuff, and I mm-hmm. call an Uber. I call an Uber, right? And mm-hmm. the Uber driver, and just for y'all, y'all want to know if it was a black man. Yes, it was. So... <laughs> I call an Uber driver. You know, they said we found you an Uber. He on his way. Two minutes. So I'm standing outside. And so the Uber driver pulls up. Um, he comes from the back of the building because he, he on the side of the building. He say Uber brought him to the side of the building. So I'm like, okay, all right, you're here now. Let me get in. How you doing? Get in the car, girl. The car is put put. Oh, no, not a putt putt. So, so I say, I said, uh, everything okay? He said, oh, yeah, but uh, you don't mind if you have to stop at the gas station. Now, in my head, because I am, I am a cook, and them, you know how we think. Mm-hmm. Uh, in my head, I said, <clears throat> maybe you shouldn't have came to work today, you know? Mm-hmm. Or maybe you should have bought a friend's car if you just had to come to work today, right? Mm-hmm. So he said, you don't mind if we stop by the gas station? I said, oh, no. No, I don't mind. Of course I don't. I'm going to go I ahead and get said, me a doctor. I would have said it depends on what we're stopping for. But anyway, you said you're going to okay. go ahead and get you a doctor. Well, I, he, I figured since he had said gas station instead of corner store, he was mm-hmm. gonna be gas. That's how my mind, mm-hmm. my mind be. I be on it, right? So mm-hmm. I'm saying he put put. He going slow, right? He need gas. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we turn and you know we we rolling. So he turned the music up as if it, I won't hear the sound of the car. Cool. <laughs> turn the music. Up. Everybody do. And you know it's one of them cars that you know is old because it got bubbles in the tent on the window. The bubble in the tent. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you done figured out. And now at this point, you're now looking at the car. 
because I will admit, only thing I look at in the Uber car is where I got to sit and where my feet going to go. Because back mm-hmm. in the day, I had, I had an experience with a car that had a lot of stuff in it, so I got issues. So, and then, don't get me wrong, because my vehicle, I have papers, shoes, and all that. But it's a difference when you got food, comb, yeah, hair. Yeah, trash. Ugh. Trash, you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you just try to, let's move on. So, I started looking around the car, right? And I was like, ah, ah, ah. I didn't look. I didn't pay attention. Ah. All right. So we going down by 59. And in my head, I was like, this car is not good to go on 59. You know, man still ain't stopped at the gas station. Because at this point, I'm scared and I need you to stop at the gas. You know what I mean? I don't I don't right. want us to be in the middle of the freeway. Right. And the car right. stopped. So I'm going to tell you how he was driving. So, And I'm going to tell you all Dudes drive like this when they know they car raggedy. They lean over towards, they lean over, they put their no, arm right. on the on the little middle console. No, no. They put their arm mm-hmm. right there, and then they lean a little. And so you can't see the gas tank, you can't see the check engine light, and you can't see that it's running hot. That's why they lean like that when you're in the back seat. So you can't see what's, what's clicking on and off. Okay, and just, y'all write that down, okay? So we coming up, we we on the feeder, right? Because he ain't got on 59 yet. And I'm saying to myself, you know, it's like a kid passing a McDonald's. I remember a comedian said that when the kid passing a McDonald's and the kid, you know, you torment the kid because it's like, wait a minute, that McDonald's, ah, like that. That's how it was about that gas station. Ah, there's a gas station right there. He 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 it must be one down here. He, he going to stop. He going to stop. Ah, it was another gas station. He still went inside. The car was still just tugging along. It was just tugging along. He enters the freeway. At this point, he got on the freeway in the putt putt. He got on the freeway, and he, I know he told me. He said he needed to go to the gas station. I know. See, it went from me being excited about the gas station for a Dr. Pepper to me just really need him to get some gas or something, just put something in there so the car can stop coughing. I just want the car to stop coughing. It wants to, it wants something to drink. Give it something to drink, you know. Do it. He didn't do it. It was all good. I made it home, though. I made it home. I made it home, you know. People say, how do you know God is real? Because I made it home. I made it home. <laughs> Ooh, I made it home, girl. Lord, it could have all ended a different way. Different way. It could have been. Listen, listen. I could have been. I could have been on the side of the freeway, you know, trying to figure my whole life out. But we made it. We made it. And you shouldn't feel that way after an Uber ride. Like, we made it. Thank you, Lord. We made it. You shouldn't feel that way after an Uber, Uber ride. You know? You just shouldn't feel that way. You know? But it happened. It did. It did. All right, yeah, I'm tormented. Let's move on. <sighs> oh, damn, what's going on <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in your world, girl? Uh, it's just a a lot of planning going on. Okay, okay. Yeah, a lot of planning going on. We um we my daughters and I, and some of my close friends, and uh, one of my sisters on this and Birdie. Mm-hmm. We um got together so we could kind of start breaking like generational curses, right? Mm-hmm. So me and Bertie and a couple of our friends um got together for one of the said friends' birthday. Mm-hmm. And you know, we were laughing and joking because um our conversations that we were having 
are totally different than the conversations we were having when, you know, about 20 years ago, which is around the time, last time we, well, 10, 10 or 15 years ago when we were hanging out previously. So, um, and we just, I don't know which one of us said it, but it was like, you know, if we knew then what we know now, how different our lives would be. Mm -hmm. Um, There are just certain things that we did not know and we were not told because those who were doing the telling and the knowing didn't know themselves. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, our parents, they worked, you know, worked, made money, paid bills, and start all over again that next Monday, you know. So that was pretty much it. We we weren't taught the value of saving. We weren't taught how to save. We weren't taught um, about our credit score. We weren't taught about um, we weren't talk about uh, taught about owning land, you know, and property. Um, mm-hmm. Just basic life stuff like. These kids now, some of them don't even know how to write a check. You know, they they don't even know what a check is because everybody's just, you know, debit card, credit card, you know, or every once in a while cash. But there's just a lot of things that we weren't ta- told that um, that we didn't know because, you know, our parents or aunties or whoever didn't know. Mm-hmm. So we decided to all get together and try to remedy that situation. So um, just um, a group of us, multiple ages, some are seniors this year in school, high school. Some have just graduated. Um, Some are in their 20s to 30s. You know, some are in their early 30s. We had one that was in her. She just had her 40th birthday. That's who we were hanging out with that weekend. And then there are like three or four of us who are, well, three of us who are in our 50s. So there's there's a lot that we have the opportunity to learn from each other. And just letting letting everybody know that you're not alone. If you if you need something, you need somebody to talk to, you need some somebody to lean on, you need somebody to give you that extra boost of support, you know, because some of us, you know, me, um, I am a huge procrastinator, and I do not, um, that self-motivation, motivational thing that a lot of people have, I don't have. But if I get that motivation and I get going, then, you know, it gets a done deal. But I know that about myself. And it's good to have people within your circle that um, that can give you the boost and the push that you need to do whatever it is that you're deciding to do, trying to decide to do, um, and all of that. So, and and we talk about things that range from as far as health to um, to employment to um, mental health, um, just any and everything that you could possibly think of, you know, and we have quite a few who have gone to college, graduated from college, and are pursuing their careers, and then we have some who are starting that journey who need um, who need guidance. Um, and it, the way it's set up now, since it's just, me and siblings and friends and, you know, family members, things of that nature, it's all for, I'm all for everyone succeeding. I'm all for everyone doing better. I'm all for everyone learning. But the ones that are, um, that need to benefit the most from that are our little brown skin girls. So that's what we're catering to. We're, we're, we're catering to, um, 
them and the hurdles that they could cross because we understand that because we crossed them because we're brown skinned girls too. Mm-hmm. Now, not not to say that any other race doesn't have that issue, but I can't elaborate on any other race because I'm not that race. So this is what we're trying to do for for our brown skin girls to help them um, see the things now that we didn't see, to give them a chance to break these different types of generational curses, whether it's financial, uh, mental, because, you know, for us, it's like, oh, she crazy, you know, that's just how she is. That's just, but you don't understand that I have learned, and I, everybody goes through some form of depression. It's just different levels, but I have mm-hmm. learned that depression is real. Yes, it and is. I, even though I haven't gone through it, the there have been people that I love dearly who have gone through it, you know, and it is a crippling situation. Mm-hmm. Um, so for people to just say, you know, I just suck it up and and get yourself together and keep going. It's not that easy. Yeah, it's it's yeah. totally not that easy. So it's just all all the things that we didn't know that we wish we had known. That's what we're trying to do for them. And I say for them, shit for us, because all of us are learning. At some point, we all have learned something. We have benefited something from. From and this was just one initial meeting. Yeah. So hopefully we'll we'll have another one. I think it's in October, the second or third week in the second week in October. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll get together and have another one. But I encourage everyone to think about that. Think think about where you would be if you knew the things then that you know now. And then try yeah. to help the next generation. Like and and it may not click for these not all of them. Some of them may get it, but it may not fully click for these um current graduates and freshmen in college and stuff like that. But if we teach them and they learn by the time they start having children and then my grandchildren too, you know, then they will know. And they'll have an understanding. And that's one less hurdle that they have to jump because they already know or they're learning now. So I think that's that's a really good, a really good thing to look at for everybody to consider. Well, you know, as you talked about depression, it was, it was over 10 years ago and maybe more than that, that I was diagnosed with depression and mm-hmm. was on medication for it, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's a stigma that comes with it because people don't want to – people, I say in culture, I'll just say culture, mm-hmm. some culture. Yep. It, it, um, we love to say just give it to God or we love to say um, – just get up and just do something, you know. But just get up and do something. With, Don't just sit I, there. Just when I dealt with depression, it I had to I had to get professional help. I had to mm-hmm. go into like when I went to my doctor's office or whatever, and I had to sit down with somebody. Yeah, it was over. It was over ten years. I had to sit down with somebody and ask them what was going on with me. You know, because I was at home, I was by myself, I was, and I think the kids, it was during the time, the first time was during the time the kids was in school. And mm-hmm. when they go to school, let me tell y'all how this thing would work. I would put the kids on the bus, I would fix breakfast, you know, everything, be going. As soon as I came in that house and closed that door, all the lights off in front of the TV, on the couch, sleeping half the day away, you know, or crying uncontrollably. It had gripped me, but I didn't know what it was. I thought I was just sad. Mm-hmm. 
I thought I was just mm-hmm. but when I sat down with someone professional and and began to because uh, she began to ask me questions, right? And so mm-hmm. she she was talking about the, the chemical imbalance and she was talking about she was talking about some stuff. And it's mm-hmm. important one of the most important things for a person that deals with depression is to have a support system. Got yeah. to have a support system. Somebody needs to know that you deal with it. So when it's, when you get in that place, they know you there. Because mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you, I was functioning. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I When in front of people, I can go do do this, do that, do this. But in my own personal life, in my own, in my own personal uh, space, I was depressed. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't figure out how to get out of it. I couldn't figure. It was like it was dark. And like you said, it's crippling. It does. It, it sits you down. It it slows you down. It, it It's a heavy feeling. I mean, and it's undescribed. You know, some people think you lying or they, they listening to you. You can hear depression mm-hmm. talk, too. Depression mm-hmm. will talk. <laughs> I will. And it, and and a lot of times when it's talking, you if you know your nerves, but that's really them trying to tell you they in a funk. You know, when people say I'm in a funk. Yeah. You yeah. know, and 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 I'm telling y'all, like it's I got I had to deal with an antidepressant for a little while, you know, until mm-hmm. I got up out of that place because it was hard to get out of it because you could be going mm-hmm. two days and say, okay, well I'm good, and then you know three days you 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 out of there. <laughs> you yeah. know, you ain't answering the phone. You don't want to be bothered. You, you know, and so, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with asking for help. Yeah. But we, as family members, as as we need to check on, we need to check on people because you don't know what they're going through. And I'm talking about yeah. mentally, mentally. You don't know what people are going through. And sometimes you know, but you we have been trained to say, get over it, uh, oh, yeah. you're tripping. Oh, I can't stand to talk to her because she always you're here. just using that so as I, an excuse not to do anything. Yeah, and I am one of those people that feel like I'd rather you be talking to me than killing yourself. So guess what? Yeah. I'm going to put that thing on speaker, and I'm going to let you talk all you need to. Why? Because... Yeah. Because the suicide rate is ridiculous. Yeah. The suicide rate is so high. And it's folk that you wouldn't even believe that's ready to take their stuff out of here. And and and, and they're getting younger and younger. And younger. And and then just think about it. If somebody would have just listened, if somebody would have just took the time you know, to just get out of your comfort zone just for just to save a life, just for just a moment. Because I'm yeah. telling y'all, you know, sometimes we, I can't deal with that. Oh, no, I don't want to hear that. Boy, every time, but I'd rather her be talking to me. I'd rather he, he he talk to me than for me to hear that he's gone. Yeah. yeah. I would rather, you know. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You know. So it's, mm. it's just a thought. Just get a group of people together and, you know, and it's got to start somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It's got to start somewhere. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I mean, that's what we can do. That's just one of the major things that we have a problem with in this world is communication. But communication yeah. is one of the biggest things that can save a whole lot of people. We try to, yeah. you know, we gotta, we gotta do better, you know. We have to. All right, then you want to wrap us up for the night? Mind your damn business. <laughs> Mind it. Mind, Mind your it. business. But if you see someone on on, it's like they're standing on the cliff and they just don't know and they're grasping. That's the time that you step out. And you step in somebody else's business. That's the only time. That's the, time. Mm-hmm. That's That's the, the only time. time. There's no mm-hmm. other time for you to be in anybody else's business other than to help them. Yep. That's it. Mm-hmm. But other than that, right, mind, your mind your business. 
All right, y'all, we love you, but you remember that you need to be a family no matter what, no matter what choice we make, ha! no matter what road you take. I don't even know I got the words right. Mm. We a family <laughs> no matter what. Call your brothers and sisters to see what's going on with them. I don't care if it's five minutes. Just say, what's up, what you look like, comment on the video. Let me see your face. And y'all know yeah. which one's in your family. You know which one's in your family. You know. The ones that say they left out of everything, that's a depression talking. Call them. Just yep. about five minutes. On your lunch break, you know, before you go in the house, you know, and deal with the husband you can't stand, call them. <laughs> you sitting out there trying to figure out what to do with your life because this Negro sitting in there and you can't stand to look at him. Call. Call your family member. <laughs> <laughs> I love y'all. I'm out your business. I'm out your business. Hey, hey, y'all take care. We talk to y'all next Monday. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>